All right, so this is going to be an integrated rate law uh, explanation video. So in these two practice problems, we're going to be use, using our integrated rate laws. Um, so just want to talk about the, the intricacies of doing that. I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing that I want to sort of remind everyone of is this table of integrated rate laws. So here I've got my, my table, the different orders of reactions, the different rate laws that would go along with those, and then these concentration time equations. So these right here, those are the integrated rate laws. That's what we're going to be using this in this um, problem. We've also got our half-life equations over here that um, you know we, we can use if we want to find the T1 half, how long it takes for half the material to go away. Um, but for this problem or these problems, we're going to be using these, these in concentration time equations or integrated rate laws. That's that's the key here. So the first thing that we're going to do is just sort of organize our information. We're we're seeing that it's first order, so that's the first thing that that jumps out uh, at me. The following reaction follows first order kinetics, so we're sort of told that information right away with a rate constant. So we're given that rate constant here, 0.352 seconds to the minus one. Again, those units on those rate constants are going to be variable based off of our um, you know, first order, second order, zero order. Suppose a reaction vessel contains 0.49 molar initially, so that's my initial concentration. Calculate how long it takes for the concentration to decrease by 78%. So what we need to do is we need to be able to take this information um, and figure out what exactly that sort of means. So to decrease by 78% um, would mean that 22% is remaining. So sometimes you might be looking at this and you might not know sort of how to get started or, or what it really means, um, but we do need to practice taking these words and sort of saying, well, what, is that, what does that really mean? So that, what that means is that 22% um, would be remaining of my initial 0 0.490 uh, molar. So over here, I'm gonna organize my information. So the first thing I'm gonna write, well, maybe we'll write first order first, just to keep that in mind. Uh, and then my initial concentration of Cl2O5, so this little uh, knot, that means initial, is 0 0.490 molar. And then our concentration that we're looking for at time t, that's going to be this 0 0.490 molar times 0 0.22. And again, I'm getting this 0 0.22 because that's going to be sort of what it you know, is when it's when it's 78% has gone away, 22% will be remaining. So 22% of this value, that's going to be my concentration at time t, which is 0 0.1078 molar. So this is what I'm looking for. That's my concentration, you know, at time t. And then what we're looking for is what that time is. So if we're given something like this, where I've got initial concentration, final concentration, or or concentration at time t, we're asked to find the time, we're given a k value, so I, I forgot to write the k value in over here, but I've got that k value, so maybe we'll write it here, k equals 0 0.352. To me, this is sort of just, just screaming, hey, you should use the integrated rate law. So let's write out that integrated rate law. So I'm choosing the integrated rate law for the first order reaction. So going back to my table, for a first order reaction, this is the integrated rate law. This is going to correlate my concentrations um, to my rate constant and my time. So that's the one that I've, I've reproduced right here. And now all it is is just plugging in the relevant information. So if I plug in my concentration at time t, that's going to be this value here, 0 0.1078. My concentration initially, 0 0.490 equals minus k, which is 0 0.352 times t. And now I can just solve for t. And that's really it. So in these problems, the hardest part is sort of figuring out, you know, organizing your information. And then once you've organized your information, you should be able to just plug it in, uh, you know, do some math and find that for this problem, t equals 4.3 seconds. So when you solve this, um, you know, as simple as, as finding a value here, dividing by minus 0.352, uh, you should get 4.3 seconds. Let's do the next one. So the next one, it's giving us the rate law, and in the rate law, it's sort of telling us that it's second order. So I can look at this rate law, R equals K, my concentration of my reactant, squared. So that is telling me that this is second order. So let's, again, just organize our information over here, second order, with a rate constant. So we're given a K value equals 0 0.139. I've got an initial concentration, so my concentration of NH4O5 
OH initially equals 0 0.620 molar. Uh, calculate the concentration after this amount of time. So T equals 220 seconds. And then we are asked to find the NH4OH concentration after that amount of time. That's what we're looking for. So again, I've got sort of my, you know, three out of my four pieces of information. I know that it's a second order. So again, using my second order rate law, which is one over the concentration of A at time T equals KT plus one over the concentration of A initially. And again, I'm getting that from my table here um, for my, my second order reaction. This is my integrated rate law. So that's where I'm getting this equation here. And now I just plug everything in. So we're looking for this one over A at, at time T. So that is our unknown. We're gonna make that equal to 0 0.139 times 220 plus one over um, 0 0.620. And now I can just solve for this concentration at time T. Um, so, you know, again, just plugging this into my calculator. Then I'm gonna have to take an inverse of that essentially. So whatever value I get over here, uh, I can sort of bring that over, bring the, the A of T up here. And anyhow, we are gonna solve that to get to a final concentration of 0 0.0311 molar. So again, that's, that's it. So basically, once you have the, the information organized, you're really just plugging it into whichever integrated rate law you, you need. Um, and this is just sort of the, the first types of problems that we're gonna run into. Um, you know, obviously, for these problems, you need to, you need to seek out extra practice. Obviously on Alex, for your Alex homework, there's gonna be a lot of extra practice for that. Um, also suggested book problems, you're gonna run into some different styles of problems. But you know, it is a pretty simple concept, right? Just plug this information in, almost like we're doing PV equals NRT again. But practicing, making sure we, we expose ourselves to all the different types of, of problems, uh, that's, that's gonna be the, the key for using these integrated rate laws. All right, hope that helps.